I'm surrounded by dinosaurs. So you are looking at Burnt River Ranch's 2024 pastured pork program entrance. These guys are going to be the ones that we are raising for butcher, for ourselves and for our customers this year. Minus the big black one, obviously, that's Agnes. She's going to be a replacement gilt for our breeding herd as well as this dark red one. That's uh, Winifred, or Winnie for short. And she's also going to be a replacement, so those girls won't be part of it, obviously. But the other ones will. So these guys were born end of February. And they are out of a really good maternal lineage that we have kept back in our breeding herd. It started with a really good sow. We've kept daughters from her. And these are piglets out of those daughters. Or that daughter. So they've shown really amazing growth potential. And they are just stunning examples of what a pig should look like and grow like at this age and we are very excited to see how they progress throughout the year but i have no doubts that they're going to be really fast efficient growers and produce some very excellent tasting meat for ourselves and for our customers pretty soon here i will be setting up the electric fence i'm just kind of waiting for the frost to come out of the ground a little bit more and we will get them trained to the electric fence and then we'll get them out on pasture once the grass starts really growing okay so let's go take a look at some of these litters that we have on the ground right now all right so first litter we have here in this group is out of our half berkshire half hereford sow these guys are three quarters hereford and a quarter berkshire she had a really nice, healthy litter of 12, which is an excellent litter size. Super happy with that. Doesn't seem to be any like major runts in here, so everybody's growing pretty much at the same rate. They are looking great. She's being a really calm mom, much more calmer this time around than the first time. Not that she was terrible the first time or anything, but you can just tell that she's settled down quite a bit this time. But these guys look great. Okay. So now, moving on to our second litter that we have born. So this is Sheila. Sheila is half Berkshire, and then the rest of her makeup consists of Duroc, Landris, and Hampshire. So she also had a really nice litter of 12. And they are growing excellent. She's always been a good mama. Well, I shouldn't say always. She's had babies, this is her second time, but she's seems to be a really good mom both times. These guys are growing really well. Super textbook farrowing. She didn't have any complications or issues. She's been really good to deal with. All right, these next two litters are a little younger. They're about a week or so behind the other ones. So this is our pure Hereford litter. These guys are about four days old. She had 10. Unfortunately, despite my best efforts, one of them died. Um, so we ended up with nine. She's got a couple little guys in here that should catch up, but they are a little bit smaller than the rest of the group. Mindy is a very friendly sow, but at the same time, she can be really hard to deal with. So getting her into the barn this year was a bit of a rodeo, but it's her first time in here. So yeah, she really just did not want to be having any part of coming in here. She gets really nervous if she feels trapped in any way. So trying to get her into an enclosed space, it was stressful for her. But now that she's in here, she's calmed down a lot. All right, and then our last litter is Salty. So Salty, we've had quite a few litters out of her now. She's our oldest sow that we have. She is about five years old. Salty is the mom of Sheila that's in the barn right now. And she is a Berkshire Hampshire cross. So she ended up with 13 babies, which is a really great litter size. And she did so, so much better this time around than she did last time. Last litter we had with her, she had 16 and she was so aggressive towards us and so mean and dangerous. 
and very clumsy with her babies and not paying attention and she unfortunately ended up like crushing and stepping on all of the litter except for six that time so it was a really poor result out of that litter but now having her in the crate for the first time in the barn and being able to watch her more closely and intervene when needed we were able to get a much better result and keep everybody more safe and less stressed out she's been very calm in this crate she's been very at ease and happy and she just seems like she's not stressed at all she she really enjoys the fact that she gets to have fresh straw every day she gets a meal pr brought to her every day she doesn't have to share with anybody or fight with anybody and her babies are doing well they're able to get away from her on both sides if need be she's just a really big clumsy old sow so having her in the crate is really beneficial yeah so i'm super super thrilled about our farrowing season that we had this spring it's just went a thousand times better than it did last year if you've been following us you know that last year we had a really terrible time with a dud boar that didn't work out so then our farrowing season ended up being super delayed and so we tried artificial insemination while we were trying to find another boar and for some reason it just kept not taking so yeah and then the few that we did have bred they ended up having really small litters because of crushing or chilling and stuff like that and yeah so having the barn has been tons better i don't regret it at all to have the guy to have the sows in here now one thing i want to address and i've addressed this in other videos in the past but i know i'm going to get some comments from people about farrowing crates and how they're cruel and abusive and how dare we put our our pigs in crates it's not natural we're not allowing them to do all the things that pigs should be doing when they're a mom but you know what i'd say 90 percent of the comments we get regarding that are from people that have never actually farrowed out pigs or farrowed out maybe more than one sow because we have tried for years we have tried the more holistic natural type approach we really have we've tried using crush reels we've tried heat lamps in the corner we've tried doing letting the sow just go outside and farrow her piglets outside and unfortunately it's just if it has worked out it's required an excessive amount of labor and time on our part and you're really just setting yourself up for disaster that way and we have had many a disaster that way so honestly i know you're not going to believe me but having the pigs in the crates it's better for everyone involved it's better for the babies they're safe they don't get crushed they're able to get nice source of heat from the heat lamp they're in an insulated building there's no drafts they're out of the inclement weather we are in northern alberta canada and it quite frequently gets to like minus 40 minus 50 here when we are farrowing usually we're farrowing starting end of january end of february right now we're doing our second group we're going into april but still it gets cold at night even a little bit of cold weather is really hard on these babies piglets are born completely covered in um, amniotic fluid and birthing fluids they're completely wet their mothers don't lick them off like other animals so it's super super easy for them to get chilled so it's really important that you do have a nice warm draft free environment for them to come into and then pigs honestly aren't the most motherly animals they're not very nurturing they don't see very well they don't have great eyesight so and as they get bigger they get a lot more clumsy and a lot less aware of their surroundings and they are more apt to step on their babies and crush them and kill them that way so unfortunately or fortunately depending how you look at it they have to be in the barn and they it's just better if they're in the crate it's better for us too if we have to go in there and we have to pull a piglet because it's stuck or mom's having a really prolonged labor and we have to give her a shot <coughs> of oxytocin or if she has some kind of thing going on and we need to handle her in any way it is so much safer for us and for her to be in the crate sows get so aggressive and so dangerous when they're in labor and having babies and they are big they're like five six hundred plus pounds they're huge and they can hurt you very quickly and very badly when the hormones are involved the babies are involved they don't think straight 
And it doesn't matter how friendly your sow is, doesn't matter how much you guys are best buddies and they're so nice and so friendly. Trust me, when babies are involved, all bets are off and their attitude and personalities go right out the window. So that's why we have chosen to farrow in the crates and now having had the experience of farrowing not in the crates and doing it the other way and now doing it this way, this way is better. I don't know why we didn't do this sooner. I wish we would have done this sooner instead of just struggling and struggling and struggling for as many years as we did, trying to do it the other way because I didn't believe in farrowing crates either. But this is better, honestly. It just really is. So I don't think I could go back to doing it the other way. And honestly, another thing too is everybody thinks that we can keep these sows in the barn for eight weeks, they're trapped in here, they have nothing to do, it's awful. When pigs first have their babies the first couple weeks, they're not doing much. They're laying down, they're eating, sleeping, drinking, pooping, and that's it. They don't do anything. They're lazy, they don't feel good, they're pregnant. If you've been pregnant before, you know that terrible last trimester is just drags on forever and you don't feel like doing anything and you have no energy well they're kind of the same and then when their babies are born that first couple weeks they're just these piglets are nursing 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 every like 20 minutes they're nursing so that's really what the sow spends her time doing is feeding these babies so she might as well be in a nice warm environment where she's well cared for and i'm able to watch them a lot better and get eyes on everybody a lot better in the barn here so then when they're about a couple weeks old, and as long as the weather's decent, they get kicked outside into a pen with their mom, and they get to experience the outside world. So they're really only in here for a couple weeks, and then they're out. So it's really, you know, a couple weeks out of their life is not too bad. It's really not. And they love it. They don't have to fight any other sows for food. They have no competition. They're warm, happy, fed, all that. So, you know, it's just good. It's good for everybody involved and I have no regrets about doing this and I will die on this hill that these are a good investment and that they are not abusive to sows. They really aren't. Anyways, now that I'm done ranting about farrowing crates again, sorry, it kind of went off on a tangent there. Yeah, I'm super happy with how our farrowing season went this year. It just went so much better and our boar worked out. So that's always a plus as well. We didn't have any issues with boar troubles. Definitely do not take for granted having the male part of your operation there. I know they don't do much other than eat food all day long, every day of the year. They don't really have much going on, but they are still essential for your operation and they can really mess things up if they're not performing for you. So don't take for granted that aspect. It's so crazy to me how strong these Hereford genetics are. Red must be a dominant gene. They don't really have color testing for pigs, I don't think, but they do for dogs and horses and stuff. And I'd be willing to bet money that red is a, a dominant gene. Hey, big mama. How you doing with your babies? Yeah. They eat a lot of food, don't they? Lots of milkies. <laughs> 